trapezoidal integration. We'll introduce trapezoidal integration, visualize that. We will formulate the equation for the method. And then in the end, I want to compare trapezoidal and discrete integration and show you that in my opinion, they're really the same thing, and this does not buy you a whole lot. Trapezoidal integration. We have the same setup that we had for discrete integration. We have some function f of x, and we want to integrate it from a to b. And so this is a definite integral, and so that means it's the area under this curve. This gray region is what we want to calculate. We have a discrete function, and so we really are only going to know the function value at these discrete points. Now, of course, I have shown the analytical function, but the reality is that that's not known. We will only know the information at these discrete points. Now, notice what's different here. The end points, this falls exactly on A, and this falls exactly on B. So with our discrete integration, we were a half cell over, if you remember, but now our endpoints fall exactly on A and B, but the points are still distributed evenly. Now for trapezoidal integration, rather than fitting rectangles under this curve, we're fitting trapezoids. Notice we are connecting the dots with a straight line. And so we're forming a series of trapezoids now instead of rectangles. Notice how much better this conforms to the curve. So this leads to the idea that the trapezoidal integration is more accurate than the discrete integration. And if we highlight the error regions, we're clearly seeing less error than we saw for the discrete integration. Only little tiny slivers of error where our trapezoid isn't conforming exactly to the curve. And this of course happens when the curve is highly nonlinear. The more linear that curve is, the less error there would be, obviously. Let's formulate this method so we can write an equation for it. So we have trapezoids, and we would like to figure out the area under this curve. So our function value at our first point, x1, we'll write as f of x1. And then at our second point, x2, we will write our function value at, as f of x2. Now this trapezoid we can think of as two regions. We have a rectangle, and then on top of that, we have a triangle. So the total area is the sum of both of those areas. First, we'll look at the triangle region. The area of a triangle is one half base times height. So the base is x2 minus x1, and that's what we've written here. The height is f at x2, minus f at x1, which we're just writing as f sub 2 minus f sub 1. And of course, 1 half base times height, that gives us the area of the triangle. Second, we have the area of the rectangle. That's width times height. And the width, again, is x2 minus x1. And the height, since we're down at 0 here, the height is just f at x1, or simply f1. So we have the area of the rectangle. The total area is the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle. So here's our equation that we got for the rectangle, our equation we got for the triangle. We multiply all this out, we expand, we simplify, and we end up here. That's the area of the trapezoid. So it's our sort of delta x plus the average of the f's. So, in trapezoidal in integration, we are adding up the areas of all of the trapezoids under this curve. And this method, a little bit, little bit easier, lets us do a non-uniform spacing. And I'm showing the equation for that, although we won't do a whole lot with that in this course. But we have the difference in the x's. So this is really the delta x, but I'm writing the x's differently, and that accounts for the non-uniform spacing. But over here, we still have the average of the function values at either end. Now for uniform spacing, this difference in x's just becomes delta x, so we'll bring the delta x and the 2 to the outside of the summation, and we're just summing a bunch of function values in here. So that's for uniform spacing, and this is what we'll focus on mostly in this class, but I wanted to present that so you can see that. 
Now I want to compare discrete versus trapezoidal integration. So let's just look at the case of uniform spacing. And so for uniform spacing, here's our equation for trapezoidal integration, where this capital N is the number of trapezoids. But notice, since we have a left and a right-hand side of the trapezoid, we have a function value that will be big N plus one. That'll be at the far right-hand side of our series of points describing the function. So N is not number of points here, it's number of trapezoids. So let's write this for four trapezoids. So our summation goes from one to four. So the term in parentheses, we're gonna have an F1 plus F2, and then an F2 plus an F3, an F3 plus an F4, and then finally an F4 plus an F5. We always have one more point than we have trapezoids. We can do some work on this because, you know, here's two occurrences of F2, here's two occurrences of F3, two occurrences of F4. So really, we're going to multiply all of the function values by two except the two endpoints, F1 and F5 are not multiplied by two. So in practice, this is really what we're doing for trapezoidal integration in our computer code. We're really summing all of the function values, but multiplying all the interior points by two, but not the endpoints. Let's now compare discrete versus trapezoidal integration. And on the left, I'm drawing discrete integration with its error regions. And on the right, I'm showing trapezoidal integration with its error regions. And we can see that conforming to the curve buys us some accuracy here. One big difference between discrete and trapezoidal is the distribution of points. Here, I'm showing the center Riemann sum. And so the function values are at the center of each rectangles. And so the endpoints for this numerical integration does not occur, does not lie exactly on B or A. Whereas in trapezoidal integration, our first point falls exactly on A and our last point falls exactly on B. In discrete integration, we have the same number of points as we have rectangles. In trapezoidal integration, we have one more point than we have trapezoids. One might say that discrete integration is easier to implement because we simply just add up all these function values and multiply by delta x. Trapezoidal integration, we could argue, has a lot less error, and we can see that by less red here. And we could also say that trapezoidal integration a bit more elegantly handles a non-uniform grid. I would like to call all of these into question, other than maybe the points being distributed differently. But I would like to call the other ones into question. And these bullet points are typically what's taught in textbooks and on the internet. Here's my argument. I want to compare the equations we have for trapezoidal and discrete integration. So before we had a delta x divided by two, and then inside these parentheses, we had basically all of the function values being added up and we were multiplying these interior ones by two, but not the endpoints. So what I did is I've moved the divide by two in here. So we have basically, we're summing all of the function values, but multiplying these two endpoints by 0.5. And so we just have a delta X to the outside. The reason I did that is because I wanted this equation to look more like what the equation looks like for discrete integration. But make no mistake, this is trapezoidal integration. Okay, discrete integration. Again, we're using our four points. We have a delta x and just a sum of function values. Let's compare these two. We have essentially half of f1 and we have a half of an f5. So mentally, since we have an even spacing, let's lump these together and think of that as just a single f1. We have an f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus f4. That's exactly what we have for discrete integration. So I would argue that discrete integration with just one extra point is the exact same thing as trapezoidal integration. So why even introduce the confusion of trapezoidal integration if they are the exact same thing? Now, here's the big question. We drew these two with the same number of rectangles versus trapezoids on the previous slide, and there was clearly more red for the discrete integration. How can I say that these are the same thing with the same error? So now to figure that out, let's interpret trapezoidal integration 
as a discrete integration. So we have our equation again for uh, four trapezoids and we expand our summation, we end up there. Let's draw this as a discrete integration. Well, we have a half of F1, so we're just chopping off the left half of an F1. Remember, this is actually trapezoid, so we have to have the first point right on A and the last point right on B. We have a 0.5 times an F5, so we're chopping off half of that rectangle. And here is how we are interpreting our trapezoidal integration as a discrete integration. We've simply just chopped off half of those exterior rectangles. All right, what about the error here? Let's draw the error and let's think about this. Let's look at a rectangle. Here's area that we have included in our integration that we shouldn't have for this rectangle. Here's an area that we have not included that we should have. Well, here we've overestimated, here we've underestimated, these two tend to cancel. So within a rectangle, we tend to get roughly the same amount of positive and negative error. And so those cancel and we really end up with the same error that we had for trapezoidal integration. And so that's really why the discrete and trapezoidal integration are the same thing. If we'd add just one extra point to discrete integration, it really is mathematically the same as trapezoidal integration. So in my mind, I've just discarded trapezoidal integration and I just do discrete integration. If I'm going to choose between one of those two, there's certainly other numerical integration methods that work wonderfully. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.